is sitting there freaking out about who bites it in the final season. I'm freaking out about who actually lives. We've seen a lot of death in this series. A lot of death. But some things are worse than death. Or so I'm told. So this is my pick for five characters that I think it would actually be worse if they lived after certain events and to the end of the series. Some of these are made more sad if certain characters die that haven't yet. So getting that one out of the way before I see a comment section hissy fit. Though let's be honest, there's never a shortage of butthurt and death comments. Let's start with number one, Tyrion. How would you like to die, Tyrion, son of Tywin? In my own bed, at the age of 80, with a belly full of wine and a girl's mouth around my cock. <laughs> Tyrion has had a fucked up life. I'm guilty of being a dwarf. You are not on trial for being a dwarf. Oh, yes I am. I've been on trial for that my entire life. A super fucked up life. His father hated him for killing his wife during childbirth. You who killed your mother to come into the world, you are an ill-made, spiteful little creature, full of envy, lust, and low cunning. Men's laws give you the right to bear my name and display my colors, since I cannot prove that you are not mine. His sister Cersei hated him because of killing her mom during childbirth and because of the prophecy from Maggie the Frog. If it weren't for me, you'd have a mother. If it weren't for me, you'd have a father. If it weren't for me, you'd have two beautiful children. I've thought about killing you more times than I can count. Do it! Say the word. Not to mention his first experience with love. My father brought in my wife and gave her to his guards. He paid her well. Silver for each man. How many whores command that kind of price? He brought me into the barracks and made me watch. That changed his life forever, and let's not include every other messed up experience he's had throughout his life, including the very people he saved turning against him. I saved you. I saved this city and all your worthless lives. I should have let Stannis kill you all. I guess with that out of the way, I do think Tyrion is going to make it to the end of Game of Thrones, but I think in that living, it's going to be very tragic for him. By the end of the final season, Cersei and Jaime will likely both be dead. Don't even pretend like those sibling fuckers live. Danny will probably die as well. That means that his immediate family, a majority of which that despised him in the first place, are dead and the one person he finally believed in? I believe in you is gone. This means Turian lives out the rest of his life with losing most of his loved ones and the one thing he finally believed in. Which, as people that have survived a lot of death can tell you, is a really hard thing to live with. But not only will these deaths and loss weigh on him, but how he was treated in the past. After years of being treated poorly for his appearance and his experience with women, every time a woman is interested in him, he'll doubt it wondering if she wants him for money or power because surely she doesn't love him for him. Because of that baggage, Tyrion might not be able to ever trust love or find lasting happiness in marriage. I mean, I guess he could get back together with Sansa. Now the happier ending for Tyrion might happen if Jon lives, sits the Iron Throne, and makes Tyrion his hand. He would be hand for a king that might actually do a decent job and isn't a total psycho. But even this experience might be mucked up by Tyrion remembering the last time he served and how quickly people turned against him. I'd imagine he will probably never trust fully again. Every time the small folk or nobles show happiness or praise for him, he remembers how quickly that can crumble to ash. Maybe this brings his alcoholism back in full force. Now maybe these experiences, maybe all this sorrow and loss push him down a different path by the end of Game of Thrones. Maybe instead of becoming self-pitying and loathing, he finally rises up. But, I mean, even if he doesn't become a better person after all this, at least he'll most likely be in charge of the Westerlands. And probably start his own vineyard. That's something, right? Happy thoughts.
Let's move on to my number two list on the saddest characters to live through the final season, Arya. Vala Morgulis. Vala Morgulis. Arya is fucked up. I mean, who wouldn't be after going through all the things she has? Betrayal, loss, heartache, and a shit ton of people she's killed, she's not the little girl we knew at the beginning of the series. Even Maisie has talked about the awful person her character has become, and how she believes Arya can probably never live with her family again, that she can never have a normal life again. And can she? Arya now has an edge to her that likely won't ever go away. I wonder what it would feel like to wear those pretty dresses to be the Lady of Winterfell. If she lives through the Long Night 2.0, does anyone think she settles down and has kids? That she's able to remain at Winterfell with Sansa? The world doesn't just let girls decide what they're going to be. But I can now. With the faces I can choose. I can become someone else. Speak in their voice. Live in their skin. I could even become you. I don't. Arya is so fucked up and has gone to such a dark place, I don't think she'll ever be able to stay in one place for long. Which could be an adventure in itself, never settling down, exploring, and setting things right through her own sense of dark justice. And I'm not saying getting married and having kids is the only way to a fulfilling life. Plenty of people never get married and never have kids, and they have a fantastic, very, very full life. What I'm saying is regardless of what Arya does, she has to live with herself and the thing she's become, and I think that's a punishment. Because Arya, no matter where she goes, isn't really going to ever fit in completely with others. Nor will she ever probably be able to trust completely. Of course, her siblings are pretty fucked up, or I guess at this point, first cousin, so let's move on to John. I did everything I could, you know. You swore a vow. Aye, I pledged my life to the Night's Watch. I gave my life. For all nights to come. They killed me, Ed, my own brothers. Look, the guy barely smiled in the first place. Sure I can't have been grateful and always sulking in the corner while the rest of you played. He then got stabbed a little. <laughs> Somehow came back even more, emo. Tired of fighting. It's all I've done since I left home. I've killed brothers of the Night's Watch. I've killed wildlings. I've killed men that I admire. I hanged a boy younger than Bran. I've fought. And I lost. I'm not even sure how that was fucking possible. Now let's think what Jon has gone through. A life of having the stigma of being a bastard and terrorized by his stepmom his entire life. I want you to leave. Going to the wall where he didn't have the easiest time, having to stay while his father was beheaded for being a traitor and learning his brother was killed, and then learning about the White Walkers and the undead, watched a lot of people he cared for die, tried to be a bro and then had the stabbing happen to him, had to win his home back where, mind you, he contemplated letting himself die before he decided he still wanted to live, oh, and watched his little brother die. And now, after all that, he has to deal with the others with some crazy dragon lady. At least he gave her a good six inches of snow. That's something. Oh, and I guess he tagged that hot ginger, too. I think we can all guess by the end of this series that a lot more people close to John are gonna die. I mean, besides his father and two brothers, which in itself is already pretty fucked up by his age. Even if he doesn't lose anyone close to him, John is going to be messed up. That's a lot to live with. And regardless of the end results, he's going to be the king of something which he never wanted. His watch never really ends. He will be burdened with responsibility and leadership for the rest of his life. Now I rest. But you, Lord Snow, you'll be fighting their battles forever. Now what if a few other people John is close to die? What if Danny dies, a woman he's in love with and probably will have a kid with? That will break him. 
After losing two loves, John may close himself off to love in the future. A man without love ruling a land he didn't want to rule. John's future is a somber one. Okay, let's go to number four, Theon. Come on, it already isn't easy being Theon. He lost his penis and was tortured to the point he became someone else. What is your name? That's fucked in itself. He also earned the hate of a lot of people through a series of really bad decisions. If Theon lives, he has a lot to live with. Yeah, we saw him have a huge moment of character development at the end of the last season, but if Theon doesn't sacrifice himself to save Yara, I will make a small orphan eat a hat, I swear to God. All right, lastly, number five, Jaime. Okay, hear me out. I know as someone that doesn't like the Lannisters, this one seems a bit suspicious, but imagine Jaime after Cersei dies and Jon and or Danny is on the throne. What is that guy gonna do? Are they gonna marry him off to some other house to solidify a Westerlands and somewhere else alliance? Okay, so he gets married. Can you imagine how awkward that might be for his wife? Okay, yeah, so I used to fuck my sister. She was the love of my life. I had three or four kids with her before I had to choke the fuck out of her. But, you know, these sort of things happen. Awkward. And I'd be interested if fathers even wanted to marry their daughters to Jamie. Okay, you're a kingslayer, you're a kinslayer, and you're a sister fucker. Yikes. But I guess for the right amount of money and land, I'm sure someone will be willing to shove off their daughter. Not only is the loss of his sister going to be hard to get beyond, but also being marked as a kinslayer, kingslayer, and queenslayer would be even rougher as I said before. Who wants to keep you around after that? Well, probably Tyrion, but still. Jaime will live with the stigma of his actions without the love of his life and the stain that love leaves on him. Rebuilding post Cersei and his family no longer having control of the Iron Throne could be hard. But again, if Tyrion is alive, maybe not as difficult as if he had died. Okay, I know I said five, but six, unmountain. <laughs> Just pretend like you don't know how to count. Unless you're a Jansa fan, then you don't have to pretend. So imagine still unliving as the mountain. He's not himself anymore. He's a slave. What happens to him if when Cersei dies? If Kyburn lives, on mountain is now his slave. And while I love Kyburn, I would not want to be his undead puppet. I'd imagine Kyburn would travel the known lands doing some really horrific shit. But, of course, in the name of science. The worst thing that could happen for Unmountain is he lives to the end of the series. Although, might be kind of funny if we see him living in a village, picking flowers, and being everyone's friend. I don't, I don't know. So those are my five, maybe six characters that I feel like they'd be better off if they died by the end of the series. Like, subscribe, and come back for more videos. And feel free to disagree with me. I, I disagree with you automatically if you disagree with me, so it's not really that big of a deal. It's, it's the great thing about us all having our own opinions.